once again, Star Wars and Unboxing fans. Welcome to another episode of Garth Cuba's Star Wars Unboxing Show. I'm your host, Garth Cuba. Today we've got one, not two, not three. There were four. There were four, but apparently one has gone a So we'll do the three today. Uh, so much for planning. I swear it was on the table, but it's not. Uh, I will tell you what that fourth one is, uh, and then if I can get it into a future unboxing, I will. This is one of those um, less expensive... Black Series-ish style figures that you can get at uh, drugstores, five below, um, very inexpensive, and it was a um, um, from the Mandalorian and from the Clone Wars, Bo-Katan. And it was a Bo-Katan figure, and uh, I was I was actually out huh, um, doing last-minute Christmas shopping on Christmas Eve, and it was after my uh, I had a I had a gig at a church, and when I finished my gig. Uh, the, the, I, I checked on my phone and it said that Five Below was closing in 10 minutes. So I went to Five Below, walked around and picked up the things I needed. And there was a Bogotan figure. So I picked that one up and I put it under the tree for a gift to me. And now it has gone. So I'm not 100% sure where it ended up. But uh, I do not think I already unboxed it. But if I do find it, it will um, find its way onto the channel at some point. Now, what do I, what do I have? Well, we have some... It's been a kind of a quiet time um shipments tend to uh and you know all sorts of shopping tends to kind of lay low in january at the time this video is being recorded uh, anybody watching videos actually i've had some comments back and forth about uh, my tree and the fact that in my studio tree uh was up so late and people were like oh no we take it down after right after christmas we take it down after new year's you know it's it was an interesting discussion uh i'm happy that everyone uh, feel free to you know always feel free to comment guys uh i try to you know i don't get too much activity in comments so i usually answer everyone or at least respond in some way so i, I encourage you to offer up um come up some opinions we also i wanted to thank we had one listener of course that, that listener the name the uh, handle is escaping me but we had one listener went on in a previous video about the captain vaughn hot toys figure kind of showed me um and kind of verbally explained where instructions are and yes, number one, I'm probably a bit, that was a pretty idiotic move of me to not just check underneath for the paperwork. I did see the paperwork. I just thought it was certificate paperwork because in some figures, that's what it was. So I didn't check that. Thank you for that. I will look at it. And he also gave me instructions on one of the antenna and where it goes, goes specifically. So I will make that adjustment. So thank you very much for pointing that out and feel free to point out any mistakes or and things that I do because I do not take it personally. I understand. I take it from, I always take it from the best place thinking it, just trying to help the channel. So thank you. All right. So what do we have today? Well, first I'm going to start with this. Um, we have an, a, something from Topps Living Set. Now, I, I'll be honest with you. I do have a collection of Topps trading cards from the original trilogy okay from back in the 70s and 80s they came out with those cards they had like a blue bat blue border and then then it came out with some that had another series that had like a red border a yellow border a green border an orange border okay so i have most of them i've collected them over the years um but the thing is that once that collection was complete uh, i didn't really have much i lost interest in trying to contain can co collect more i was sort of interested in card collecting in that dark time area when in the early 90s, there were some cards that were coming out before there were toys. And uh, I did, you know, occasionally pick up a pack just to see. It was a lot of them were artist renditions and stuff. But then stuff Top started coming out with this, and I haven't really been following it. So I'm kind of giving my own layperson's definition of what this is. Um, I, I'm, you know, when I saw this, it's called Top's Living Set. And I have been receiving, you know, updates, emails stuff on Facebook, things of that nature, where they're advertising additions to the, to the living set. I'm, I'm going to make an educated guess that a living set is essentially a, uh, a set that continues. It, it's always moving and growing, and it's, it's not going to ever be complete as long as Star Wars isn't, isn't complete. And they started adding cards that look like, just like you know the vintage collection figures, they look like the vintage cards. They look like the blue background, the original set. But now they are showing new characters, characters from the Clone Wars, from Rebels, from Mandalorian, from Boba Fett, Book of Boba Fett, from Obi-Wan, everything else. That was great. So 
and and at first, and the other thing when I when I first received them, I thought they were digital. I thought that you would only be able to collect them digitally. I was doing the Topps digital trade card trading thing for a while. I kind of gave up on that, and I just just did, it just didn't keep my interest. So I, I thought that's what this stuff was. But then I realized that you could buy the cards, and I thought, oh well, that's nice. People want to keep adding to the collection and make it seem like a nice, bigger living collection. So that's cool. But I had no interest in it until this figure became available. And I said, oh, oh no, this figure is going to become a part of my collection, even if it's the only one addition to the original set. And I'm going to do that unboxing for you now. First of all, what's really nice is that it comes in this really nifty plastic um, container, okay, which not only is good for just hold, displaying one figure like this one, but it also could you know, hold a set of them if you wanted to put a stack of them together and you just kind of store them in a set. Um, so what figure would you say? Well, anybody who knows me probably will not be too uh, surprised. And that is Omatress. Yes, Omatress, or switch around the letters, it's Maestro. This, of course, is the cameo John Williams played in The Rise of Skywalker. He was the bartender on Kijimi. So in addition to that, he does have a, a nifty um, uh, little description here. Let me read it to you. Okay, so little, the lettering is a little small here, but as a bartender in Kajimi City's infamous Spice Runner's Den, Oma Tress has found his share of discord. Cord, discord. Hmm. And on Occupy Kajimi, the drums of war are part of the soundtrack of life. Tree or Tress can only hope the the present strife will reach its crescendo and he and be followed by an era of harmony. Sorry that took so long to read, but it's very, very tiny lettering. I love the musical references. Bravo Tops. This one not only does it find its place here in the collection, I'm actually going to put it right up here next to the appropriately, next to the Cantina band. So he'll be looking on. And some, some other John Williams wonderful news. He has announced that he is not retiring. Uh, there was a few interviews back. He said that he would be, he's, I think he was speaking more um, kind of like matter of fact, like, oh, it's, I, I've heard that you know, in doing the Indiana Jones film with, with the producer, not director, Steven Spielberg, and Harrison Ford, of course, that Harrison Ford might be hanging up his acting uh, chops or I think he's just hanging up his hat for Indy, personally, because I think he'll do other stuff. But So he's like, well, maybe that'll be the time for me to retire. So then everybody went, oh, my God, John Williams announced his retirement. Well, now he just said in a more recent interview that uh, he is, you know, he's been feeling good. He's got good health. So maybe the next 10 years, 90 to 100, will be the best years yet. So bravo. All I can say to you, John, is that, Maestro, if you keep, if you keep making soundtracks, or any music for that matter... I, for one, will keep listening, and I am so happy for that. You are an inspiration. Bravo, and his birthday is, is February 8th, which will be around the time this video drops, so happy 91st birthday to the Jedi Maestro. All right, so on to the rest of the unboxings. Well, we got two that I'm going to be unboxing from these boxes, but not unboxing from regular boxes, because they are um, ones I want to keep. We have the Mandalorian on Tatooine credit collection. Sadly, this one um, unfortunately came from uh, Entertainment Earth. Not unfortunately it came from Entertainment Earth, but it did see a little damage. So I'm not sure. At some point I may unbox it. I'm not going to do it yet. Um, a lot of people have very strong opinions about the credit collection. I don't love the credit collection, but I like the credit collection. I love the fact that they are kind of honoring the art and, you know, again, I have, art, I have an artist in the family. My daughter, as everyone knows, is an artist. All the artwork that precedes the show and many of the shirts that I wear, not this one, but other shirts, uh, are her art. So I support artists. So to have this be featured and to have the, the character repainted to match more of the art, I think is really cool. And I love that they little, include a little something extra with the credit. I will say that I have canceled some of my orders on these um, only because I... Um, I'm kind of thinning out the collection now. I'm starting to 
pull back a little bit on what new things come in. And I do recognize that this is pretty much a repaint of an, another Mandalorian figure. I know that that's what they do. I understand that's what they do. I would love to get angry at them for that, like so many others seem to want to do and seem to do. I just don't have the energy. <laughs> I feel like, you know, I my job is hard sometimes, and I do what I do, and I do the best I can, and I'm limited by what I can do by many forces beyond my control. And that's the, pretty much the same thing with Hasbro. And yes, I know that if you trace, follow the money enough, you'll probably find, you know, the people at the top making more money than maybe they need to. Maybe you'll find shareholders worrying too much about making more money. I don't know. That's a whole economics discussion I'm not willing to get into. What I am going to say is that I'm glad that we have any Star Wars. And um, I will pick and choose. I won't buy everything, but I will pick and choose. And this is one that I, I kind of liked. So I kept this one on order. I'm sorry that the packaging is a little warped. You can't really see it on screen. I'll, if I can get a little reflection, you can see right there there's a little bit of creasing, right? That's kind of where, and a little bit on this side too. So you can see that. And then normally Entertainment Earth is not bad. In fact, they've been my best. This is their first. Oh, wait, it's not Entertainment Earth. It's Amazon. Never mind. I stand corrected. <laughs> Entertainment Earth, you're still good in my book. You're still the best right now, okay? Uh, Target has often been a close second, though, when it comes to packaging. This just arrived today. I was only going to do the, the what's well, supposed to be three items. And then this was going to be the fourth, but as I said, bo has uh, disappeared. Oh. Oh. All right, well, Target, they have the retro figure. And this is that multicolored one. And again, I recognize, I recognize that it's a, re, that it's a repaint of, of a exclusive figure. I recognize it. Okay, that doesn't bother me. The package, pristine. Came in with bubble wrap, it's protected. One problem. This is a Target thing. Why? Why, oh why must you do this, Target? But, I will say, because of the, the lenticular style packaging, it came right off. No harm, no foul. Target, you're good. Just do me a favor. Try not to put those stickers over their face. That happened to me. Check out one of my old videos. You'll see. Um, slight corner bend, but overall, overall, overall really great. Um, I don't know. I kind of like them. I recognize that they are a little doofus, you know, and I do question people that would buy, try to get all, try to get all of the different ones so they can have one, two, three, four, five, six different ones in different colors. It's a whole prototype thing. I think they're just trying to kind of match the prototype, or not match, but get, get on to the prototype fun. I don't know, whatever. So that will do it for this episode of Darth Stupid Star Wars Unboxing Show. Uh, I hope you guys enjoyed it. If you didn't like it, let me know what you'd like to see. I, I would much. I have plenty of stuff I'd like to share. I got a couple of fun plans in the work. I got a couple of uh, collaborations I'm in the process of setting up. Uh, it's a very busy time for me in my day job over the next few months. But uh, when that ends, we we do have uh, you know the, the new year. Um, we have some some things in the works, and we're looking forward to it. I wish I could tell you I'm going to celebration, but I'm not. <laughs> Celebration Europe, too far away, but I'm really going to make a strong goal to try to get to Celebration in the United States the next time it is there. So we'll see what happens. But I do have a lot of other things planned. I do have a Halcyon voyage. Fingers crossed it's still there uh, in six months. Or, yeah, about six months. Um, and it was rescheduled, as I mentioned in a previous video, from the one that was canceled because of the hurricane. And then I have uh, the, a voyage on the Disney Wish which has a lot of Star Wars stuff on it. It won't be a Star Wars cruise, but there will be some Star Wars elements to it that I look forward to sharing, hopefully being able to share with you. So thank you guys so much for watching. Like, subscribe, do all that stuff. And we will see you next time. Until then, may the Force and the toys be with you.